Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2020 Panini Mosaic Football No Huddle Edition. Four box, pick your team, number eight. Turbo, turbo. Is that up? 2020 Panini Mosaic Football. There's all the, uh, the players in this right here. Thanks everyone for getting in. Rhea, that, la that last team was sitting there for a while. Then Rhea took care of business. Thanks for that. Now, I know we opened up a couple, and I think yesterday maybe, and then I know Sean marked these, so I just grabbed four random boxes from the back. And we did, by the way, we did break 10 before 8 and 9, and after 7. So 9, actually, are the last four boxes of that particular case. Now, I, I have to... I don't know if there's, I don't know what our plans for, I think Ethan was asking earlier. Um, I did see another case back there, but I don't know what our plans for that case is. Is it going to go to personals? Will it end up in mixers? Will Nick post it later tonight? I don't know. So I apologize for not having answers on that. But just keep an eye out on Jackie's Case Race Offline. We got uh, NFL action happening tomorrow, folks. I am excited about that week three of the NFL. Um, does anyone have any? I don't know. Anyone expecting any crazy upsets? Anyone have a have a hot take? Uh, who will have a big fantasy day? Anything like that? Sean Jaspi thinks that Dwayne Haskins is going to have a huge day, a monster day. If you look at the Joe's picks and the break schedule link you can see that he thinks he's gonna have a lot of touchdowns a lot of yards he thinks a monster breakout game his homer pick is justin herbert having uh, over 400 total yards and like five touchdowns uh i think that's more of a joke though uh, melvin gordon he says 170 total yards or more total yards and two total tds he's got that I don't know. I'm not really good with player props, but I can tell you that those sound those sound wacky. But hey, that's why they're Sean's red hot takes. All right, I got, I got my Lakers on TV right here. They're up ten at the beginning of the second half, but this is where Denver is the most dangerous. I feel like the second half. So the Lakers, I think, got to be really sharp. They want to advance the NBA Finals. All right. Good luck, everybody. We've got Julian Edelman, Mosaic. Remember, all card ship, ladies and gentlemen. Marshawn Lattimore, Silver. So you'll be getting all this stuff right here. There's rookie Brandon Ayuk. And that will go to the Niners. That will be for Lee. And our first autograph is the Chiefs, is for the Chiefs. That's Chris Slaughter with Kansas City. Kansas City, here we come. Nice, let's set that aside over here. Logan saying Packers 42, Saints 23. That's his scoreline prediction. There's A.J. Dillon, speaking of the Packers. Think he does? He gets any act? That'd be good for the hobby if AJ Dillon gets some work in. Isn't aren't the who who's going to be scoring those touchdowns? Aren't they missing a, a key receiver or two? There's DeAndre Hopkins, eight out of ten. Nice low number there for Kurt and the Cardinals. But I'm with you though, Logan. I'm I'm on your uh, I'm on your Packers uh, plus three. Is Eddie George? Kevin Bird? Oh, and a Joe Burrow, base Joe Burrow. That'll be for Sean Maddock and the Bengals. No parallel here, but maybe we can find some. Danny says he thinks on Monday, uh, 
Monday he sees 80 total points in that Monday night game. So take the over, folks. And he says Mahomes goes off. Who do you think wins? It might be a square pick, but I got Baltimore minus three and a half. In any given weekend, does anyone pick all the games correctly? Yes, Mike Tower. In the uh, Jason Jaspie's uh, mom runs a fancy football pool. Or not a fancy football pool, a pick 'em pool. Just straight up picks. Guess who went 16 and 0 last week? Ted. Ted Jaspie did. And Nick and I were like, man, if he had parlayed all 16 of those games, <laughs> just straight up on the money line, he would have won a lot of money. Yeah, me? No. 39 out of 50, Tom Brady. I wish. MVPs, Tom Brady. Patriots edition going to Rhea. Jordan Love, NFL debut. Rookie Mosaic. No, just straight up, Logan. Just, just straight up. There's Clyde Edwards Hilaire and NBA. NFL debut going to Chris and the Chiefs. There he is again. In the NFL debut, Joe Burrow. Sean Maddock with the Bengals. Boomer. And we got a James Morgan. Parallel here. Rookie parallel. Got to save those. Jets. All card shipping. You know, you'll get everything here. Jeremy 33 with the J-E-T-S. Jets. 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 Hey, I'm happy if I get... If I get a... Uh, 55, 60% of my bets correct. Sometimes I, some years I do. In the long run, how good of a career do you think RJ Barrett has? It's a good question. What do, what do you guys think? Um, the problem is, is the organization. I don't, I think his individual talent is there, but he's got an organization that constantly builds a bad team, keeps turning over coaches, and an ownership that, that I don't know, maybe isn't doing all that it can to lure in big free agents too. Like, KD, I mean, years ago, Dwayne Wade and, and LeBron James Pass on the Knicks, and then LeBron James decided to go to Miami instead. KD and Kyrie went to the Nets instead of the Knicks. You know, so there's a lot of there's lots of, lots of issues there, but I think that caps that caps his uh, his his potential. Players that played well despite a poor organization. I mean, that would be like that would be like big men who can control the game. Maybe, maybe like Shaq pre Kobe, post Magic. You know, like Orlando Magic might have been really good in spite of some not good Lakers teams. But but for 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 a player like RJ Barrett who can't just individually dominate like that it's it's kind of tough but I'd buy low on him there's a reason why he was drafted so high a lot of people thought he was going to be better than Zion yeah nuggets are looking a little tired but they're still scary I don't, I don't think the lakers are out of the woods yet 
John Brown, blue to 75. We got Steve Young, 36 out of 50. Niners, Lee. Justin Herbert. Keep an eye on Justin Herbert. Has the clock run out on Markel Fultz? I don't think so. I, I feel like he could... St I mean, next year I think would... I think next season will say a lot. Chargers, that's going to go to Mark Bissett. I think next year is going to say a lot about Markel Fultz because I think he showed showed some signs in, in during bubble play that were pretty encouraging. Now let's see if he takes it to the next level. There's NFL debut, Chase Claypool, Silver, Steelers, Oliver. But he could, he could have like a Victor Oladipo-style revival. But next year, I think, will be the big, big sign of that. All right, Justin Herbert, Mark Bissett, Chargers. Just base Justin Herbert. Save. I know that Brady will all, all card chip anyway, and there's a Jalen Ragor for the Eagles, EA. But Brady in his Buccaneers jersey especially has looked pretty good. There's Nathaniel with the Bucks. There you go. Looks like, And Brady looks like he's just starting to knock the rust off. and Not the rust, but just starting to figure out how to play with his new teammates. Starting to get a little bit better, a little bit better every game. Brand new offense and all that. There's Chase Young. Nice parallel of Chase Young. That'll go to the Washington football team, Mike Fission, with that. Yeah, Rex, you heard, you read right. The NFL or MLB, Major League Baseball, will be doing bubbles for the playoffs. There's Drew Pearson. I think uh, one bubble is in Dallas and Arlington, really, where the new Ranger Stadium is, and the other bubble is in San Diego, mostly. I think there's a couple side bubbles too, but and the World Series will be in in the new stadium in Dallas as well. There's Chris Conley to 75. And Tua Tagovaiola, NFL debut for Miami. Takumi Abe with the Dolphins. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so too, Rex. I thought they'd, they'd do like a two or three city bubble. But I don't know. I guess... I guess... No one really got super sick, I guess. So I guess MLB's like, hey, it worked out. Base to a tag of Viola, also for Takumi and the Dolphins. John Brown Silver. Calais Campbell and Jerome Bettis. All right, two more. Yeah, I mean, really, the only teams that missed significant games was the Cardinals and Marlins. I think there were a couple other teams that maybe had a staff member that get it, and then and then maybe had a game or two postponed or moved around. But I think the only major cases were Cardinals and Marlins. So I guess baseball probably thinks that the way they did it was successful. You know, vast majority, 90% of the, of the players and the staff all, all followed the rules and did all that stuff. So 
Will any league not be able to not do bubbles for next year? Well, I, I don't think owners want a bubble situation to happen, Mike Tower. All the owners want their games next year, whatever league they're in, because they want to get that stadium revenue again, arena revenue again. So no, I don't think they'll do a bubble. Although, I, I was, I'm, in my head, I'm kicking around the idea of what I want the MLB World Series, would the World Series in a bubble be interesting like they do with the Super Bowl? Right? I mean, obviously, the whole series instead of one game. I thought that would, was, that would be interesting. But maybe that's just way too football. Adam, Adam saying Peyton started slow when he got to Denver, and then yeah, Brady just needs to build some chemistry. Yeah, I mean, week one didn't look good, but week two looked better than week one. I'm sure week three will look better than the previous week, so on and so forth. You know, Bruce Arians is, I think, too good of a, a, a of a of an offensive coach. Ooh, look at this coming up. Tom Brady, obviously, too good of a. A football player with a ton of weapons. Hey, it's a Kyler Murray autograph. Second year Kyler Murray. Kurt Disser with the Cardinals. Not sure if you were expecting that, but there it is. Nice, Derek. Yeah, we'll add that to the schedule. There's NFL debut Joe Burrow. I think we just have to. I'll, I'll after I finish this break, I'll add another another filler break because that'll fill up elements. It's Patrick Queen for the Ravens, fifty-four out of seventy-five. That'll be for Rhea and the Ravens. We got Barry Sanders, 27 out of 50. Lions, Sean Maddock with the Lions, Hall of Fame, purple, parallel. Will Fuller. And Tiki Barber. Josh Jacobs. Julio Jones, blue, 75. Devin McCourty to 50. And a Tua, base Tua Tagoviola for Takumi and the Finns. There you go, yeah, Barry Sanders, a player who played well in spite of a poor organization. I wonder how many of those highlight plays were, all of his signature highlight plays were due to the fact that offensive line breakdowns and stuff like that. There's Joe Burrow, Mosaic, parallel, or that Disco parallel, for the Bengals. Nice, Sean Maddock got the Bengals straight up, and you got him in his LSU gear as well. Very nice. Murray is, as I 
And a couple Clyde Edwards Hilaire's, some CEHs. <laughs> Mike Tower saying, as a Lions fan, I'm very close to putting myself on fan waivers. The Raiders will pick you up. We'll pick you up, Mike Tower. I'll spend a good portion of my fab budget on you. You know, join Raider Nation. Go to the go to the Death Star. Wear goofy costumes. It's kind of like Star Wars with football. And it's Vegas. All right, last box, ladies and gentlemen. No, yeah, I have actually never been to a Raiders game in person. Isn't that crazy? Um, I grew up a when I was a wee lad, a, a Los Angeles Raiders fan. My my family is more of a baseball family. We went to a lot of baseball games, but football wasn't like a like a huge thing. Like we watched, like me and my cousins, we the kids would watch it all the time. But for the grown ups, they weren't so. Didn't really have them there. Then there was no football in LA for a long time. And then when I was in college in San Diego, uh, you know, I was a poor college kid, so can't afford to go to football games. Went to a lot of baseball games though. So yeah, and then just, and then you kind of blink and you're like, oh, huh, I guess, <laughs> you know, many years later, you're just like, oh, I guess I've never been to one of these things. NFL debut, Disco. Justin Herbert. Oh, yeah, that's right, Arthur. Now I'm a baller, so so wait till I get, you know, seats at Allegiant in Vegas. When I get season tickets there, 50-yard line halfway up. Maybe just get a Jaspi suite at SoFi as well. I, well, I think the Giants were in were in Harlem, I think, maybe nor, maybe closer to the Bronx. I do remember when the Dodgers were in Brooklyn, though. There's Joe Burrow there, and then the Yankees were in the Bronx, and then the Giants were uh, in in like North Manhattan, close to the Harlem area there. Those were the days. There's Joe Burrow. All there was, three baseball, three big baseball teams out there. That's Brian Edwards from our Raiders. Glorious. There's Brian Edwards, Raiders. That goes to Vegas. That'll be for Michael and Zima. And there's KJ Hamler for EA and Denver. Nice rookie auto for you. You can go ham. There was sports talk back then, Mike Tower, when I grew up in Brooklyn. There's Russell Wilson. It'd be called talking to your neighbors. Talk, it'd be talking to old to, to old Frank at the. Uh, at the Five and Dime. Five and Dimes? Did they have those? At the soda fountain at the drugstore. You know, maybe you maybe you would talk with some of the, uh, 
you know, some of the wise guys on the street corner who talk about the bookies, the mob-owned bookies out there. You talk to those guys. They're sports talk right there. Those are the days. I don't have those days anymore. Now it's just... Now it's just talking heads on ESPN and... And, uh, Joe Burrow. Okay. Uh, after his ruling on the floor, he's upgraded Chris Lee. Foul counts as one on Howard. Run necessary contact. Bengals, Sean Maddock. Millsap will have two shots to make one. And then Denver gets the ball free throw line set. There's out of 50. Yeah, those damn Yankees. Wait, what's, what's, which one's the sell sheet hit, Jay? Those damn Yankees. Dodgers are dem bums until dem bums finally won a World Series after 30 years in the 50s. And then soon afterwards, they broke the hearts of all of us Brooklynites by uh, moving out west in the 75. And it was sad. I remember when, they, when the wrecking ball came to Ebbets Field. And then the Giants left. The New York Giants left. And then all of a sudden, you're just only down to the Yankees. Terrible times. Thank God for the Mets. Who's, uh, whose logo, I think, represents the old New York... Mets or the New York Giants logo is the New York Mets logo, and then the colors were supposed to be closer to the Dodgers. So it was a blend of the Dodgers and the Giants, the New York Metropolitan. So that's why the colors and their logo are the way they are. There you have it. Some baseball history in this football break. Four box, no huddle, pick your teammate in the books. 2020 Panini Mosaic Football. I'm Joe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. Go Lakers, go Raiders, go Dodgers. We'll see you next time. JazzFeesCaseBreaks.com.